Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Currently in Wano, Admiral Ryukugyu is searching out Luffy to potentially defeat him and also obtain his reward, because our favorite rubber captain has just recently managed to become a Yonko, which has piqued the interest of this Admiral and the Navy at large. In this last chapter, 1053 of One Piece, we saw that Admiral Ryukugyu went directly to the flower capital to capture Luffy. So in this next chapter, we're going to see a confrontation between Luffy and his allies against Admiral Ryukugyu. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Luffy's confrontation with Admiral Ryukugyu, what events might happen in this next chapter in which these two characters will meet, and what the outcome of this fight might be. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've been around for a few episodes, we'd be absolutely honored if you consider leaving us a like or even subscribing with a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out and motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing the channel or the video with a friend. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So friends, as we're seeing the stage set for our final conflict in this last saga, we're going to be seeing Luffy coming up against more and more powerful enemies. And it's really going to get exciting as we see more of these important conflicts that are happening. Recently, Luffy managed to defeat one of the greatest enemies in our story. After having planned a lot and having managed to form an alliance with not only Law, but the Minx and the Samurai, and eventually Kid and his crew. Through all that work, Luffy managed to confront Kaido and then bring about his defeat. Even after defeating someone as powerful as Kaido, there's still several powerful enemies that are going to arise in our story, such as Teach, the SSG, and especially the Admirals, who will be responsible for confronting the powerful pirates that are conquering great titles such as the new Yonko. Which means that even the Yonko could now be hunted as the balance of the world world is beginning to kind of go off kilter, thus beginning a great change in the whole world of One Piece. And this will start with the fall of all the Yonko, and we recently saw that a Marine has already begun its mission to defeat them, and an Admiral is going to confront our newest Yonko, of course, being Monkey D. Luffy. Now this is something that we could have hardly ever imagined with the old Yonko, because as we've seen, the world government avoided confronting them because they wanted to maintain the balance of power in the world. But nowadays, they no longer seem to care about this balance and now seem to wish to defeat all the pirates in the world, including the Yonko. Recently, we finally had the reveal of Admiral Ryukugyu, and he seems to be not only one of the most powerful characters, but probably one of the most broken Devil Fruit users, having a very important mission within the Marines, which means he almost has the level of a Yonko. And of course, it would have to be somebody that powerful that would be able to confront Luffy directly without making any other problems. Because as we saw, Ryukugyu was able to run in and defeat King and Queen with the greatest of ease. Now, in fairness, King and Queen had already been, you know, kind of taken down a few pegs, but that's still no easy feat. And he also managed to defeat some of Kaido's subordinates who were also around these other pirates. Being an admiral, Ryukugyu also has the ability to command, so he's also ordered Marines to bring subordinates to support him because he would really need that backup to confront the pirates that were still alive after everything that went down in Onigashima. For now, it seems he needs the reinforcements to get the defeated pirates to Marine ships because it seems now the world government wants to take over Wano so that this country becomes another place that would be under the command of the world government as well as the Gorosei. Because the borders of Wano are currently closed, the buster call that has been ordered cannot get any closer to Wano. Because if the citizens were to open up the borders, it would be incredibly dangerous for the pirates that are in Wano as well as everyone else that lives in this country. Let's just remember what we've seen buster calls do to islands like Ohara and even Eni's lobby. These groups of ships possess immense fighting strength and allow them to destroy islands just as easily as we've seen in the past. So if the borders were open, Ryukugyu could order the Buster Call and just destroy Wano if he wished. And as we saw in the final panels of this most recent chapter, Ryukugyu is going right to the center and capital of Wano, where the celebration for defeating Orochi and Kaido is currently taking place. All of this to commemorate their victory and honor the alliance that brought it to fruition. But because of this big celebration, Ryukugyu knows exactly where Luffy is. So he's going directly to the flower capital to defeat him, who has now become a Yonko, and Luffy has also had a big bump in his reward. But this may not be something or a situation where Ryukugyu can just walk in and take Luffy. After all, Luffy is celebrating alongside the pirates, ninja, samurai, and minx who were responsible for helping him to confront Kaido and Big Mom and Orochi and everyone else that they were looking to take down. Because of his high rank within the Marines, we see that Ryukugyu has to be incredibly strong. And because of this great strength, he may have the confidence to just walk into the main city of Wano and not fear any of the opponents that may 
may be there. So Ryukugyu is walking towards Luffy without fearing any of the pirates there, and is also going to Wano alone without having even a few reinforcements at his side to help him defeat or at least distract Luffy's allied pirates. It almost seems as if Ryukugyu doesn't even seem to have a plan or that he may be going to capture Luffy only on impulse because it seems that his thinking is a little naive that he could just confront several pirates alone. But again, he could also be much stronger than he seems. As we saw in Marineford, the Madmirals are incredibly powerful, being able to confront even a Yonko, so their strength is able to defeat very strong pirates with great ease, which means that the pirates that are in Wano may not be able to possess the ability to defeat this Admiral so easily. We also have to remember that it's only been a week since the Battle of Onigashima, so the pirates that we have there are not fully recovered after this huge fight that took place, which means that they're not going to be in tip-top shape and are still pretty weak. If Luffy is unable to use his full strength against Ryukugyu, who is currently at full strength, this could bring about the defeat of many of Luffy's allies. In addition, Ryukugyu's powers also have a large area of effect, allowing him to strike several enemies at a long distance, and so he could create plants around him to help him during the battle. This means that he could create a large area with plants to distract Luffy's allies so that he could face Luffy directly in a battle between an admiral and our new Yonko. But as I said earlier, Luffy is not yet fully recovered, and since he's recently awakened his Devil Fruit, he may not be able to use Gear 5th to its full potential or even at all. During the battle we just had in Onigashima, we saw the strongest crew members of the Straw Hats, being Zoro and Sanji. They had some pretty tough times facing up against King and Queen, who of course were the two most powerful pirates on Kaido's crew. But in fairness, since King and Queen had been defeated by Zoro and Sanji, Ryukugyu was easily able to defeat them, where had he faced them at their peak, he might not have had as easy of a time as we saw in the manga. But whatever the case is, this is going to be a potential where Ryukugyu could be able to be on par with Luffy, or even possibly surpass his strength, because Luffy's not going to be able to fight at his full potential. So even with the help, it may still be really difficult for Luffy to defeat Ryukugyu. Thinking back to the Revelry arc, Ryukugyu and Fujitora fought Sabo, Morley, Lindbergh, and Karasu, who were trying to save Kuma from the Celestial Dragons. But so far, we don't know the end of this battle, but it has been rumored and speculated that Sabo lost his life. And Ryukugyu may have actually been the one responsible for defeating Sabo, because in the confrontation back in Dressrosa, we saw that Sabo and Fujitora were pretty evenly matched, so Ryukugyu may have been responsible for being able to defeat Sabo with his power of his Devil Fruit. But speaking of his Devil Fruit, let's talk about it for just a moment. Ryukugyu seems to have what we could consider a really broken Devil Fruit, one of the most interesting, in fact, we've seen so far in the story, that has many interesting and advantageous characteristics that could help him in certain moments. For instance, because Ryukugyu's Devil Fruit is based on the characteristics of a plant, his fruit may be able to take root and give him other several advantages that only plants can offer. One easy example of this is that Ryukugyu has managed to go three years without eating anything at all, and yet he's managed to stay extremely healthy and fit, even though he seems to ingest nothing. Now, this may be due to the fact that the fruit allows him to get nutrients in other ways, or even photosynthesize, rather than having to eat food orally. Because his Devil Fruit has the characteristics of of plant's roots. This would allow him to absorb nutrients through the roots so that there's really no need to physically eat. We also saw in 1053 how he was able to absorb nutrients and able to even absorb drinks from inside a barrel using just those roots coming out of his hand, and even seemed to be able to taste them. So because of this technique, Ryukugyu can absorb even the nutrients from his opponent's bodies if he's able to impale them with his roots or his vines as he did with Queen, where it seemed like he was able to absorb their fat, leaving the pirate very, very Thin. So in combat, Ryukugyu has a big advantage if he can get his roots or his vines to penetrate his opponents, which could be a big problem for Luffy. I mean, after all, he needs all of his nutrients from his body to be able to use his various transformations. Because right now, in his base form, Luffy doesn't yet have the ability to confront an admiral just like that. So for Luffy to be able to take on Ryukugyu, he would have to dodge all of his different roots and vines so he doesn't have his nutrients drained. But as we've also seen, Ryukugyu has the ability to generate several plants from his body and use them in pretty much any way he wants, either offensively, defensively, or as a support to get around. Also, the plants he grows are grown very quickly, but apparently he can only make big plants when there's soil nearby. So it seems that he can create small forest biomes around his own self. Ryukugyu is even capable of generating large quantities of plants to unleash large-scale crushing attacks through the roots he can create from his hand or any other part of his body. We've also seen him perform impossible feats, such as the ability to generate a large flower
flower from his back and use it to fly. In fact, it was this flower that was able to take him to Wano, even though he was very far from the island. And besides, other plants that may be able to help him move around more quickly that we just haven't seen him use yet. And not knowing Ryukugyu's full capability, we could see him be able to generate plants from any kind of wear, and it would give him a versatility from his body where he might even be able to resemble Luffy's fruit, because both fruits require the bearer to be creative in order to become a very powerful fruit. So one can easily imagine that Ryukugyu, through this creativity, can use his plants in many different ways, which could be useful in combat or in any difficult situation where he needs something specific. So however this next chapter shakes out, we can see that Luffy could have a very hard time confronting Ryukugyu in his current state, because he's still worn out, which means that the Admiral is going to have a big advantage in this fight, because Luffy may not have the use of all of his powers in order to take him on. However, Luffy still has a numerical advantage that can help him during this fight, so Ryukugyu might not be able to defeat him, or at least not in an easy way. But after this conflict in Wano, there may be many more conflicts between Ryukugyu and Luffy, allowing these two characters to fight at their full potential. But before we wrap up today's video, we also want to make sure that we mention one other thought and idea that's been speculated out of the community, and that is that Ryukugyu may in fact be Wano for a very different purpose, and not being there to necessarily capture Luffy, but also to re-green and regrow Wano. Because of course, we don't know where people like Ryukugyu and even our other wonderful new Admiral came from. And it's been highly speculated in the community that Fujitora and Ryukugyu may actually call Wano home. So all of this could be a guise to get Ryukugyu back to the islands so that he can help regenerate and refresh Wano back to its beautiful and former glorious state. But either way, we're going to have to wait and see what Oda Sensei has for us and how this wonderful story plays out in our next chapter. But for now, we'd love to know what you think about it. What do you think Ryukugyu can really do with his fruit? I mean, do you think there are limits or what other things may exist or in his power set that we haven't seen yet? Next, do you think Ryukugyu is really there to take down Luffy or do you think there could be some ulterior motive? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So with all that said, my friends, I want to thank you so much for watching the video up to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, why don't you give us a like or hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. I really hope to see you in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.